America's waterways move soybeans, corn, grain products, and more from family farms to feed the world. U.S. agriculture's positive trade balance relies on efficient waterways to transport these products at the lowest cost. From the upper Mississippi River to the Gulf, our waterways provide efficient, safe, environmentally sound ways to move freight. Modern waterways move America forward toward a stronger U.S. economy. Brought to you by Waterways Council and its stakeholders. Thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week interview. I'm Spencer Chase, joined today and as always by AgriPulse Senior Editor Phil Brasher discussing the week that was, agriculturally speaking, in Washington, D.C. And quite frankly, not a lot of agricultural action on Capitol Hill this week. Uh, there's a lot of other things that are taking up the legislative calendar. We've right. got a uh, a Syrian refugee crisis going on. Uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, there was some terrorist activity in Paris last week. So a lot of those things are tying up a lot of what's going on here on Capitol Hill. So there's not as much going on in Washington for ag, but we'll be sure to summarize what we do have for you. And Phil, I want to start with something that's been in the works for in the neighborhood of 20 years. And that uh, just today, and I say today we're recording this on a Thursday, there was the approval of a genetically engineered or genetically enhanced animal protein product, a, a GMO salmon, as some folks have called it, from a company called Aquabounty. And so with that in mind, this is going to be a segment of a segment of a segment of a protein industry. I mean, not, not a lot of folks eat salmon compared to the rest of the proteins combined, and even fewer are going to end up eating this genetically modified salmon. But what are the broader implications of something like a genetically engineered animal protein going to the market? Well, uh, it's as you say, it's it's certainly historic. It is the first genetically engineered animal that's been produced, uh, been approved by FDA for human consumption. It's going to be very interesting to see how uh, this is accepted on the market first by retailers and by consumers. And obviously, retailers are not going to offer it unless uh, they believe their their cus uh, consumers, their customers, are going to accept it. And a number of the supermarket chains have already said they're not interested, Safeway, Kroger, a few others. So we'll be watching to see how uh, what happens here. There are obviously other uh, species of fish and other species of animals that uh, have been genetically engineered or in development. But this is, uh, uh, and this has been a couple of decades uh, in the works. So you could, I, if nothing else, the industry has seen what a slog it is to, to get to this point. And not just something relating to the fact that there is a genetically engineered animal protein now on the market or approved to be on the market, mm -hmm. but there is a broader and bigger discussion going on right now regarding the labeling of genetically modified ingredients. Now we've seen the House of Representatives take some action and pass a bill that would preempt state GMO labeling laws, waiting for some kind of uh, some kind of equal action on the Senate side of things. So Phil, with regards to that, you know, does this change anything with the Senate discussion on a GMO labeling bill, and where where is that Senate bill at, at this moment? Right. Well, on the salmon, uh, FDA says no uh, labeling is required. They did come out with some uh, guidance for voluntary labeling, but uh, FDA's position and now and always has been that unless a food is materially different than the conventional version, whether that's corn or soybeans or canola. Uh, or in this case salmon, then there is no justification for labeling it. In the legislation now under, uh, under development in the Senate, we had a bill that passed the House, would uh, preempt state labeling requirements. There's one that uh, Vermont has enacted that's uh, set to uh, uh, be implemented uh, in July, so that's created uh, uh, some um, urgency for Congress to address this and I think we'll likely be seeing some uh, action on that uh, in December that's one of those big issues that's uh, that's being hashed out uh, one of the interesting things is what the FDA's action on this salmon uh, might do in terms of the politics because the same uh, in a lot of cases, the same uh, folks who are pushing for GMO labeling are also uh, been have, have also been trying to stop the salmon. Uh, I, I talked to uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska uh, today. She's been very insistent on uh, labeling uh, uh, this GMO sa uh, salmon. Obviously, Alaska is a big producer of uh, wild right, right. salmon, and they're worried about their their market there. 
Uh, but she said she is going to continue to push uh, in the next in the next few weeks to get a, a restriction on FDA that would uh, require them to uh, uh, label the salmon. Uh, however, she says she sees this as a completely different issue than labeling an, an ingredient like uh, corn or soy soybeans. Because what what was her famous line? Something to the effect of "corn doesn't swim," so, something something <laughs> like that. Something so like that. Yeah. That'll yeah. be it'll be interesting to follow this discussion uh, going forward because this GMO labeling bill is really one of a number of things that saw some action kind of behind the scenes this week in Washington. There's a lot of things that are going on because there is a, this is really the last week in the month of November that Congress will be able to vote on things. They'll come back for a day to close out the month in uh, the week after Thanksgiving and then we're into December and with that in mind when December starts we've got a December 4th timeline on the highway bill and then a December 11th timeline on the omnibus or the spending bill that need to happen. So in between now and then Phil what's going on for behind the scenes negotiations that are important to agriculture and what do you think the implications will be as far as the timeline is concerned once December starts? Well What's happening right now is that uh, the appropriators, the members of the appropriations committees, and the leadership, they're working on this big government-wide omnibus, we call it here in Washington, spending mm -hmm. bill. That's where these issues like uh, GMO labeling, uh, potentially the country of origin labeling law for meat uh, may be addressed. Also, uh, child nutrition, reauthorization of child nutrition laws, that could be addressed in the spending bill. Uh, another thing is the waters of the U.S. rule. Uh, there's a lot of uh, optimism that um, uh, in the agriculture community uh, and as in among the uh, Western and uh, Plains uh, uh, members of Congress, senators and House members, that uh, they're going to get some language in the spending bill to, uh, that would uh, block that rule from being, being enforced. All that's going on being negotiated behind the scenes. At the same time, the highway bill, uh, that's being negotiated by a different set of uh, lawmakers. Mm -hmm. They want to get that done by uh, December, the, uh, December the 4th. So if you've, been con if you've been watching these videos and been thinking about maybe getting a four-week free trial subscription to AgriPulse, the month of December would be an excellent time to do it because there's going to be a lot of news going on on Capitol Hill. A lot of things very important to agriculture are going to be tied up here in the end of the year as, as, as kind of is the, the par for the course here yeah. on Capitol Hill. Yeah, one other thing I should have mentioned, that a lot of, uh, I know a lot of our viewers uh, care about it, and that's the tax extenders. That's the right. Section 179 expensing right. allowance, the 50% bonus depreciation, mm -hmm. the Diesel tax credit, the wind power tax a credit, of, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Into there. That all has to be extended. It expired at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to do something about that in December as well. Um, the Senate is pushing very hard. I was talking to the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee uh, just a few minutes ago. He's pushing very hard, believes they can do a two year extension. In other words, uh, renew it, uh, renew them for uh, this year and then uh, for. Uh, 2016 as well. That would take care of uh, that issue at mm -hmm. least through the uh, presidential election next year. And there was some hesitancy in the House to do this for a while because then Chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, Paul Ryan, wanted to tie this into a broader tax reform conversation. It's looking like broader tax reform is not going to happen by the end of December, right. seeing as it's almost the end of November, and I'm not sure if they've really started on the subject. Yet, to be, to <laughs> he's totally he's talking about that for next year, but that gets uh, anything in a, in a year divisible by four is mm -hmm. difficult to do. So it'll be certainly interesting to follow these issues and see how the politics work out here in Washington these next couple of weeks. And we'll be sure to keep you abreast of everything that we can for the, for the duration of really of 2015 and, and on into the future. For Phil Brasher, I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.